Hi guys and welcome to Fix Savers. Today we're going to be continuing our pool table series of videos and in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at how to uh, fit a new pool tablecloth. Let's take a look. Now one very important thing to uh, bear in mind when it comes to pool tablecloth, especially if you haven't yet bought yours and you're watching this video in preparation of uh, doing this job uh, in the near future, is there are two main types of pool tablecloth. There is napped and there's worsted and both have their own different characteristics and both come in at a different price point. Uh, so it's well worth doing a quick bit of research if you haven't yet bought your new pool tablecloth. Uh, we've already filmed a video on the differences between worsted and napped and uh, we'll add a link for you below so if you want if you want you can just go down click that video and check that out but it's well worth knowing the differences especially if you're looking to buy your uh, pool tablecloth uh, fairly soon. So when it comes to fitting your pool tablecloth, there are two main methods that you can use. Uh, the first is the staple method, which is what we're going to be using in this video. And the second is the gluing method. Uh, the staple method is particularly um, useful if you have a slate that has a wooden um, backing to it. As, so you can staple into that wooden backing as you go around, as you'll see as we progress in the video. Most slates do have that wooden backing, so most people tend to use this staple uh, insulation method rather than the gluing. Uh, but if the gluing sounds of interest to you, go and do a, a bit of Google research on that as well. Find out which is best for you. And if you find it's the staple one, let's continue. So a couple of things we're going to need to be able to do this installation. Firstly, of course, we are going to need a stapler. This is an air stapler that we're going to co uh, connect up to uh, an air compressor. Uh, these aren't very expensive and uh, these really help because they're really, really quick to use. You can, of course, use the uh, manual um, staple gun as well. That's not an issue at all. Uh, just obviously it will take a little bit uh, longer. With regards to uh, staples, uh, obviously you need to get the right ones that fit your uh, staple gun. This is a T50, we have T50 staples. Generally for these installations you use a quarter inch. You can use half inch but it's not really required, it's a little bit long. Uh, but a quarter inch uh, would be absolutely perfect for this installation. Uh, and of course you're going to need your pool tablecloth. And before we get our cloth anywhere near this table, what we want to do is we want to make sure it's as clean as possible. So yes, we're going to do yet another clean. So we're going to go around, brush off any uh, extra particles. Uh, be careful of your, um, your uh, uh, beeswax joint just there, try and avoid, uh, avoid that. And then uh, once you've uh, given it a good brush over, get yourself a uh, damp lint-free cloth and just give it a, a bit of a wipe over the surface uh, gently. That will just help remove any kind of dust or particles that are remaining on the surface. Again, when you're using that cloth, uh, try and avoid your, uh, your beeswax uh, joint. So work kind of either, either side of the joint, not over the joint itself. So we want to leave that now for probably take about 20 minutes or so to, uh, to dry out. It's fairly quick. In the meantime, you can go ahead and get all of your um, tools prepped, get your staple gun ready, loaded up, get your air compressor ready if you're going to be doing all that. And uh, one very important thing uh, to bear in mind before you um, actually uh, unpack your new pool tablecloth, especially if you've just been working on uh, these uh, pool tables, you're going to have dust and dirt on your fingers, give your hands a really good wash. The last thing you want to do is put, start putting big, greasy, horrible fingerprints right in the middle of your brand new cloth. So make sure you do give your hands a good, a good clean before you handle your, your uh, new cloth. Okay, so we're ready to uh, unfold the cloth and see what we've got. What we want to do before you place it on the table is just give it a bit of a sweep. The cloth can have little bits of uh, cotton material on it. So we're just going to sweep it across the uh, face of the slates. Just get it centered on your table so you know what kind of length you've got to work with uh, before you start. So what we're going to do next, I'm just going to flip the cloth over so we're going to have the underside of the cloth facing up and we're just going to check the underside of the cloth uh, for little bits of frayed uh, material, offcuts of cotton and that kind of thing. So just check the underside of the cloth and you've got any little bits of um, uh, kind of leftover cotton where it's manufactured. Now's the uh, the time to get rid of those. 
and just check it for any little uh, lumps or bumps or anything that shouldn't be there. Just give it a good check over the whole surface. So once we've checked that, what we're going to do is uh, revert the uh, cloth back over so it's playing side back up. Uh, and as we do that, we'll give it another sweep off uh, onto the, on the uh, slate. Okay, so next what we'll do is we'll do exactly the same check that we did on the reverse of the cloth, just going around looking for any uh, imperfections, any little threads of cloth, and also running your hand over the whole table to see if there's any little bumps or lumps, if you've got a tiny little bit of grit or something like that on the underside of the cloth, now's the time to, to get it out. So we're just going to give it a double check, spend five minutes going over this cloth uh, before we start uh, stapling it down. Good idea as well before you um, uh, start, it's going to be working on the uh, on the ends, so the uh, on the ends it's worth um, marking the uh, approximate centre uh, on the uh, timber as well. So we're now back to playing surface up and what we want to do is just uh, level it out on the sides, not worrying too much about the, uh, the ends of the table, we want to make sure that there's an even amount of material overhanging on each side. Just go along, you'll get a feel for how much is needed. Sure that your overhang is the same on both of your sides. So next you want to come to your uh, head of the uh, table, well, one of the ends doesn't really matter too much which, and I'm just going to pull that down. So I haven't got an amazing amount of material, Some uh, sometimes you get cloth and you've got quite a lot of uh, overhang. I just want to pull that down so that it's flush with the uh, bottom of the wood. That all the way along. And then what I'll do, just before I put a staple, a couple of staples in it, in this, uh, I'll just double check that I'm still there, uh, happy with the uh, the sides that I've set out, and then we can uh, begin the process. So first thing we're going to do is just going to fold the uh, cloth down a little bit. We're going to put two staples uh, next to one another, uh, just in the centre right here. So next what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the cloth and we're going to stretch it directly sideways, not diagonally, we're going to pull it uh, directly sideways, get a nice amount of stretch on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a staple in approximately about uh, six inches uh, from the end. We're not going to staple right up to the end at this stage, we're going to leave a nice six inch gap there. And then once we've got that staple in, so we'll stretch that, get a staple in, and then we'll go back and we'll fill in back to the centre. And uh, when you stretch the uh, material, you want to pull it fairly uh, fairly tight, you want to get it nice and taut. Uh, so you don't want to pull it so far that you, can, um, you might rip it, but you do want to get quite a lot of tension on it. And then come to the other corner and repeat the process. Remember you're pulling directly sideways. So you're not trying to get any more overhang here. You're not pulling it diagonally. You're pulling it directly sideways. So nice tension, nice and tight, about six inches from your corner. And then again, fill in the gap. So next come to the uh, opposite end of the table. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this uh, cloth. We're gonna stretch it, pull it down again, nice and tight. I'm gonna get a couple of holding staples in the center here. If the cloth manufacturer has been quite uh, stingy with your cloth, you've not got a lot to work from, uh, so you're going to be kind of uh, using your thumbs quite a lot to get this down. So having a second pair of hands at this stage can be really helpful if you've got a second person handy. So now you want to come in just past your six inch uh, mark, approximated. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, pull this uh, towards you so it's got tension this way. And then you're also going to pull it to the side because remember you want to uh, get tension in this direction as well. Just like doing the other side, remember we just pulled it directly sideways. This time you want to take the tension out lengthways. Sorry, add tension lengthways, but then also sideways as well. So we're going to grab it just past the six inch mark here, pull it straight towards you, and then also to the side, and then we're going to get a staple in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is we need to uh, get that tension in, in this direction all the way along. You can see it's coming up uh, here between our two staple points. 
So right in the middle, I'm gonna pull that nice and tight and then get a couple of staples in the center. Yeah. Yep. So now we've got our uh, three sets of staples. We've got a pair of staples here, a pair of staples in the middle, and a pair of staples bang in the center of the table here. So what we're gonna do between each of these staples, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Pull, staple, and in this gap here, right in the middle, pull and staple. And then it's just a matter of filling in the gaps. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing in the middle there, give that a bit of a pull bit of a pull this is in between uh, each of the staples and then we're just going to fill fill in the whole lot so we've got here to here completely stapled and then we're going to repeat that on the opposite side so again stretching this uh, kind of uh, towards you and out about the seven inch mark to, to put a staple in about six inches and then pull it in the center, get one in there, then the, cent then the center between these two, center between these two, and repeat uh, the process until we've got all of our staples up here finishing about six inches from the end. So next what you want to do is come back to your uh, corner and we're just going to pull it uh, tight uh, over into this corner in this direction here. I'm going to put a uh, couple of holding staples uh, just in here. So you want to go around the table and repeat that process on your four corners, pulling it in nice and tight, two holding staples just here. And this is only on the ends of the tables, not on the sides. And what you'll find uh, during your installation is generally the pockets are the hardest part of your uh, cloth uh, installation, especially your uh, your center pockets. Uh, the reason being that these obviously, uh, they get the circle is like 180 degrees. It's like a half a circle. Um, so you've, you've got 180 degrees. You've actually got to stretch the material quite a lot to fit one of these uh, side center pockets. When you're on the, uh, the actual corner of the pool table, it's just a quarter of a circle. It's an enlarged quarter. So you haven't got as uh, extreme an angle uh, to work with so they tend to be a little bit more forgiving so they are quite uh, tricky especially these center pockets uh, but just kind of bear, bear with it take your time uh, there's, there's no rush and uh, like I said we'll give you a couple of little tips so if you do make a little mistakes it ends up uh, being a little bit messy in here it's not the end of the world it does happen um, and yeah we'll show you this this nice covering method so you can get a nice uh, nice finish when you look down into the pockets so what we want to do now is either side the pocket here just pull about an inch or so not ridiculously tight pull it in towards the, the uh, center of the pocket we'll do the same on the other side what we're trying to do is end up with a little bit of uh, uh, surplus material uh, in the pocket which makes it easier for it to finish the pocket So the next stage, what we want to do is, is pull the cloth into the pocket and want to get a staple in the center as low as you can onto the, uh, onto the wood support. So now using some good scissors or a knife, you want to make your first cut up towards the uh, staple. You want to sh finish a little bit short of the staple because ideally you want the tip of that cut to, when it's folded underneath to not be visible uh, from the front. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it again trying to uh, get rid of any uh, creases or wrinkles we have across uh, across the top edge here. Pull that down about halfway between the two. And we're gonna get an, a staple down again as low as you can down here. And once your second staple's in, you want to cut uh, another slot towards that staple just to help really relieve the air pressure as we go along. Now I'm gonna pull one final one into the corner on this side, just in here. And then again, we'll cut another little uh, tag 
and towards that staple. So now we just uh, get, get ourselves underneath and we're just going to make sure we've got plenty of staples and that all of these little tabs are nice and secured. Okay, so now we're happy that everything's uh, nicely secured underneath. You can actually go ahead and remove these uh, staples uh, in the face. And if you're happy with that at that stage, then that is job done. Uh, unfortunately, on this particular one, uh, we had to redo uh, this one because the staple pulled out. And so we have a visible uh, little cut. And because it's the type of material it is, it's gone quite frayed. So what we'll do on this particular one, we'll do the little uh, patch up trick. Uh, so we'll show you that next. Uh, but if you're happy with the finish, you can remove those facing staples and that would be job done. So next I'm just going to go around to the uh, corners and pop out these little two uh, holding ones. This is that little kind of six inch gap at the end. These little uh, two holding ones uh, in the corners can get all those removed. Now, because we've um, released the uh, the corner uh, pins, you can see we've got some gathering just here. And what you might find is when you do this, you, uh, and you still have it under tension before you remove those last staples, you have these, but they're really, really fine. And this is why those two kind of staples go in, because if we stretch the uh, corners on opposite ends, stretch them out, you should find you can get rid of all of those creases, like so. So you get a really nice, smooth finish. So next we're going to uh, start to uh, pull in the uh, corner pockets. This is the end of the table right here. This is uh, one of the sides of the tables. And uh, what you want to do is you're going to pull it diagonally. That's going to pull out any um, creases around your centre pockets there. A nice strong stretch. But then before you staple it, so you're going to put a nice stretch on it, you're also going to put a bit of a pull there. And that's where you want to get your, uh, your staples in. And then whilst keeping pressure here, you can do the same on this side a little bit of pressure just there and when you pull it down also pull it back towards the pocket a little bit now the reason for that is what you want to do it again is any uh, material uh, that's um, loose or baggy you want to draw it back in towards the uh, the corner pocket yeah So next, looking at the side, you want to compare one side of the table, see how much overhang you've got on that side. So you can see we're just past the, uh, the wooden beam there. And then go around to the other side and compare. So yeah, so yeah, we've definitely got less on this side. So this is the side that we're, uh, that we're going to start from. So what we're going to do is we now need to uh, uh, put tension in uh, directly across. We've pulled it into the corners. Now we need tension directly in this uh, in this uh, direction so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pull this forward a little bit you don't want to pull this too much because it's not attached to the other side if you pull it too much what will happen is you're going to move all the material here and you're probably going to end up starting to get a little uh, yeah they can just i don't know whether you saw that come up then but if you pull it too much you're just starting to get a little uh, wrinkle pull up there so you don't want to pull it too much just pull it so it's taut and then we're going to put the uh, tension uh, on the other side so make sure it's kind of in the kind of position that you want it to kind of finished in but you're not oh, really trying to give it a big pull at this stage you can do that on the other side so i'm going to grab in the middle first of all put a couple of staples in there and then i'm just going to follow along and i'll probably put one about every kind of six four to six inches at this stage you don't need to complete them all we can come around and do that in a minute just enough to hold it so we can pull from the opposite side to generate a bit of tension
So now going to the center on the opposite side, gonna go try and get a nice, uh, nice pull this time and uh, get some uh, staples in here. Uh, when you're doing this, just keep an eye on the uh, on the pockets. Make sure you're not um, generating uh, any uh, any uh, creases uh, as you go. So next, pulling halfway between the two again, get, get nice tension on it and get a couple more staples in there and do exactly the same thing. Pull halfway between those two points, halfway between these two points and just even it out until you've done the whole uh, row. So I've got the staples in both sides on this half of the table. Uh, you can see we've got our about six inches apart sets of staples. So we can go, go along at the end and just get that tiny last bit of tension in and fill in these gaps. Now before we do that, what we want to do is make sure the other half of the table is okay. So we're going to go back to the opposite side of the uh, table and we're going to start there. Uh, again, uh, exactly like we did before, you don't put too much tension on the first side, uh, just, just enough to get it to kind of the position that you're happy with. And then we'll come around to this, uh, this side right here. And uh, that's what, again, where we'll be putting the, uh, the tension uh, to draw the cloth out. Okay, extra pull. Come back. Okay. Then next, we're gonna cut our uh, line directly towards the uh, first staple. Again, ending a little bit short of the staples, exactly the same as the uh, side pockets. Uh, so, so hopefully the tip of your cut uh, doesn't show when we do the fold down. So next I'm just going to cut an extra slot into each side so just so I've got a bit more control for pulling it underneath at different angles. So next I'm just going to go underneath, uh, get some more staples in there, make sure that nothing's going to come out. And once I've done that, uh, again, if you're happy with the, uh, the finish that you've got here, you can uh, remove the, uh, the face uh, staples and that would be job done. Alternatively, if you want to tidy up a little bit, uh, obviously because we've got this extra section here, we've got the visible uh, cuts here. So we're definitely going to put in a, a little repair section on here just to make it look uh, really nice and tidy. So again, if you want to, uh, to do that, uh, then uh, do that. If not, then you're finished. So next stage, we can just uh, tidy up the corners here. Put a bit of a fold in them. Fold it over, put a couple of staples in there. And once we finish that, if we've got any gaps uh, between our groups of staples, now's the time. Just a little bit of tension between each one. Just make sure you fill up all these gaps all the way around the table. Next, you just want to cut off your uh, excess material so it doesn't show once you've got your rails fitted. So you want to cut it up to the uh, level of your uh, wood. You sometimes do this with a knife, depends on the type of uh, material you're working with. And just follow that all the way around the entire table. And again, when you come to your uh, when you come to your uh, pockets, you're doing exactly the same thing, getting a feel for where the wood is. be a little bit thicker on the pockets. If you want to kind of cut bits off that's fine. So you kind of see what you're doing. Cut it all level. Uh, any bits that are sticking sticking out. Again you can just uh, get rid of those. A bit of a general tidy up in the corners. So you just want to follow that process all the way around the table. So to attach our rails to the uh, playing surface here We've got uh, bolts that pass through uh, up from the underneath and they actually screw into these uh, these holes. So the first thing you want to do is flip your uh, rails over and see how many of these uh, mounting holes that they've got. So uh, ignore these, these are where the uh, pockets uh, insert. So we're looking for the mounting 
uh, ones. We've got one here, one in the middle, and one here. So these particular rails, uh, side rails, uh, have three. So what we can do is now we need to transfer that over onto here. But what you'll find is when you're feeling for the um, uh, for these holes, for example, I can feel that there's one uh, right there, but then there's another one there. So I've already found two. Another one there, another one there. So you may have more um, holes than the than the three that are on the rail. So you must be sure that you're cutting the right ones. Remember, we've got indentations for where like the uh, the slate screws go through and things like that as well. So to help us identify, we can uh, have a look from the uh, underside. We know approximately where they should be because our rails are kind of roughly in place. But if you have a look on the underside, uh, we can see where the uh, bolts are intended to pass through, and that will help us identify which of these holes are the correct ones. So when we look up underneath, uh, it makes it uh, nice and simple for us. So we've got this uh, big cutout in the wood and a hole right there in the slate. As we look along to the one side, we've got another one just before the pocket, coming back, back to the middle, and then to the other side, uh, another one of these right here. So these are the three. So our centre one is going to be this hole right there. Now when we cut this hole, uh, you can either do it with a, a knife or scissors, whatever your uh, preference is. Uh, one important thing to, to note is if you just cut like a cross on it, then when you push the uh, bolt up uh, through from underneath, you've got like four little tabs that will be left from where you cut that uh, cross, and they can get uh, locked into the uh, thread uh, on the um, on the actual bolt uh, where, where it bolts in so you've got to be a bit careful so ideally you want to kind of cut as much of that um, hole out as as possible so if you do cut do, do put a cross in it then you want to cut each of those little four tabs off in addition but kind of whatever works for you but we need to get these holes cleared my little uh, scissors here I'm just going to lift up these uh, each of these four flaps and I'm just going to uh, snip the ends of those off just to help to ensure that nothing's going to uh, obstruct the uh, bolt when the bolt does pass through to actually try and make a, a proper hole quick tip for you before we move on it's a good idea once you've done this to try and ensure because this uh, cloth's under tension that these don't go any further they'll be kind of clamped under the uh, rail uh, eventually uh, but it's a good idea to uh, uh, just to try and help it out to make sure it doesn't fray any further than we've uh, than we've cut out so a couple of things you can do what you can do is you can get your uh, your crazy glue your super glue just put a tiny little spot just on the end of your cut it's a little spot there a little spot there a little spot there little spot there and that what that will do is it will help prevent um, that uh, kind of fray from going further into the material so you can use a uh, crazy glue for that um, and obviously don't leave a lump there it needs to be fairly flat the other thing that you can use which comes in uh, really handy uh, for jobs like this when you're working on material uh, quite a lot uh, is you can use uh, this is a clear um, nail polish uh, we, pick, uh, we pick this up from the uh, dollar store and it's a uh, very very good for doing this sort of thing it does does exactly the same job as the uh, super glue will do but it doesn't tend to stick things together so you're not going to accidentally kind of glue the uh, cloth on or anything like that onto the uh, slate in any way uh, so you might want to nick some of this from your wife or your girlfriend or next time you're in your dollar shop just pick up some clear nail varnish or alternatively you can use a uh, super glue crazy glue just do exactly the same thing There we go guys, that concludes uh, how to replace your main pool table cloth.
Now we're actually going to carry on on this pool table and we're going to uh, recloth there all of the uh, rails and we'll produce a video on that as well. Uh, we've done loads of videos including full pool table construction, uh, how to make your own pool table light, uh, all sorts of uh, really really good content. We'll add a load of links for you in the descriptive text below uh, to a load of uh, our other pool table videos that you might well find interesting. Uh, but for regards to the main cloth uh, that's it. If this has been helpful for you or enjoyable for you we always ask please do us a favour before you leave just hit that like button and if you could hit that subscribe button it really does help us out. Thanks for watching guys we'll see you again.